Hello everyone and welcome back to Jimmy Talks Jira. This week I want to talk about Jira automation and that is the automation rules that you will find within the project administration of Jira software or Jira service management projects. If you're not familiar with those, I highly recommend going to university.atlassian.com. There is a paid course for beginners on Jira automation that will get you up and running with all of the basic terminology and the structure of how to build automation rules. What I'd like to do today is go one step beyond that, and we want to cover things that are on the little bit more intermediate side. I want to talk about some of the things such as your automation rule limits, if you're not familiar with them, and how your usage of those rule limits are calculated, as well as looking at the automation playground and some more advanced concepts such as smart variables. So let's dive in. Okay, as I mentioned, um, university.atlassian.com, Jira automation course and description. So as you'll see, it is $300 US, but in this course, you'll learn how to create basic and advanced automation rules. Um, I'm going to stress that the advanced is not 100% true on that. I found that a lot of this was very basic um, when I did the course myself. I still think it's really important for anyone who hasn't experienced automation that you go through that. Uh, so let's move on and let's take a look at some things. So uh, this is just the cloud plan list. Um, as you can see, you know, uh, the free versus standard versus premium. If we scroll down to automation, all of them have automation as something that they can do. Uh, the free plans, which uh, some of you might have, uh, you're limited to 100 executions per month. And we'll get into what executions means in a second. Um, for any of you that are on standard, which I, I suspect a lot of you are, if you followed my previous video about how to set up a free standard uh, dev instance for yourself to do some testing um, or for certification exams, uh, that will be limited to 500 executions per month. And as you move into premium and enterprise, uh, you're allowed a thousand executions per user per month. So if you have, say, a hundred users, uh, you're allowed a hundred thousand executions per month, which, uh, you know, great advantages for being on premium. So uh, let's talk about what executions mean. So a rule execution is any time uh, an event triggers the rule to be considered. Not that it actually successfully completed, but whether it considered whether it should fire or not. So if you have something that is triggering on create issue, every time you create an issue, that counts as a rule execution. So you're saying, well, that's everything. Uh, that doesn't seem fair. Uh, I'm going to burn through that in no time flat. And you're right, with one condition. So what doesn't count towards your usage is single project executions. So when you set up global rules or rules that affect more than one project at the same time, those count to your rule executions. So my recommendation as a best practice would be try and set up single project rules as often as possible because those don't count towards your execution limit. And you can do a lot of very powerful things within just a single project uh, with these uh, automation rules, and that doesn't count towards your execution limit. Now, there's going to be times when you need to do rules that uh, either affect the global instance or they cross multiple projects. Uh, I know personally I have some where you need to take an issue from one project and clone it into another, uh, you know, let's say because it was accidentally posted in the wrong project and you set that up as a manual triggered rule. That counts as a rule execution, but because it's a manual execution, there's a bit more control over it. So, you know, be mindful of your multi-project and global executions. Uh, single project executions, go nuts, they're free. So, uh, as I mentioned, the Automation Playground. If you haven't seen this yet, um, just go to Google, type in Jira Automation Playground, and you'll get to this page. What's cool about this page is this is an actual Jira project you can test things out on. You'll see that there are some other people who have already uh, played around with some things here. You can actually create rules here um, and test out 
the process of creating rules. So if you want to, say, skip the university course because you're smart enough to figure out some of the stuff on your own without needing the course to tell you, come over to the automation playground, play around with it. You should get a hang on how to do things pretty quickly that way. Let's talk about uh, smart values and uh, variables um, next. So this is one of the more advanced concepts that I was hoping would be included in the automation course, but really wasn't talked about a lot. Smart values are basically the concept of, if you look at this formatting here with the double curly braces and then issue su dot summary and then double curly braces, is a value that represents the summary of the issue that triggered the execution rule. So uh, backing up one step, when you run an automation rule, it is going to execute against an issue, uh, whether that be an issue that's being commented on, uh, an issue that's being updated, or an issue that's being created. The issue part of that smart value is the triggered issue. And then with the dot notation, you can access various fields and metadata about that issue in smart variables so that you aren't using uh, hard-coded strings, but you can actually pull pieces of information from the issue itself that you want to use for comparison, uh, to add as other values for other things that you're using the, the execution of the automation rule for, and that is super cool. Uh, they have constantly been working to update this document uh, as well as the other documents about uh, smart values. Uh, so keep checking back if the, you don't see what you, you're looking for. I'd also highly recommend checking out community.atlassian.com. Uh, the online community has a lot of very smart people, including a number of marketplace vendors and solution partners who are more than happy to chime in on some of the things that they have encountered as they are trying to do things for their various customers. You'll also find other customers, possibly myself, who will be there to help share some of the things that I have encountered or they have encountered um, while they've been trying out uh, various things for automation rules themselves. Uh, so what, we, what I want to just show off here is, you know, something like a delete comment. Um, so what this is showing here is that you can trigger to look for the comment ID um, or trigger off of issue comment dot first ID and use that smart value as a part of how you want to delete a comment that is uh, included on an issue in an automation rule. So um, this just, uh, you know, some details on the formatting. Uh, I think it's one of those things where check out the documentation on some of these things if you want a bit more information Go to the online community if you're interested in some things. I just want to now dive in and show you a quick demo of how an automation rule is created and how it looks. So we're going to breeze over some of the more basic concepts. So you all obviously need a trigger for your rule. We're going to do something that's not just based on issue create. I'm actually going to go with issue commented. And we're going to make it a uh, comment being the main action. Now you'll notice we can trigger on comments that are added during a transition or while other fields are being edited as well. Uh, but I'm going to go just with that one for now. Um, and you'll notice that I am setting this up as a single project automation rule. So as we already talked about earlier, this will not count towards my execution limit. And that's awesome. So other things that we can do here is we can branch the rule. We can create some conditions for the rule. I don't need to do any of those on this one specifically. We're just going to do a new action. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to assign the issue. And you'll see that there are tons of things here that we can use. Uh, we can to go with a user in a group, in a role, uh, a defined user list. Um, we're going to specifically use a smart value here because I want to show off the power of, of what we can do with this. And then what we're going to do here, as you can always see, I did some testing on this ahead of time. Uh, we're going to use the issue.comment.author. And we're going to basically create an issue. And then we're going to have uh, this be, we're going to assign the issue to the commenting user. So I'm going to turn that on. 
And we're going to come over here to my project and you can see I have my test issue here. We'll just refresh our view. You can see that it is currently unassigned. So I'm going to comment on here and say I'm going to take this issue by comment commenting on it. And we're going to save that comment. And then you're going to notice that it's going to refresh and look at that. It just automatically signed it to me because I was the one who added a comment to the issue. That's the power of automation and the power of smart values. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, and, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Please feel free to go to community.atlassian.com. Uh, and ask all your questions there. You'll find me answering some of them. You'll find other people uh, coming in to answer them. Um, I hope this has been beneficial for people. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Before I let you go, I wanted to call your attention to something that the Atlassian team is running in the online community right now. If you go to community.atlassian.com, you will find Migrations Month, which is the current promotion that they're running. It is all about Jira Cloud Migrations, and it's running throughout all of January. If you haven't done a migration to the cloud yet and you haven't really put any thought into it or you're curious but you don't really know what's going on, I absolutely recommend you check out what's going on. They're going to have a lot of information to help you make the right plan for you. Uh, I will personally be involved in it. Or even if you have uh, already done a cloud migration, swing by and provide all of the, the things that you ran into or tips and tricks that you have encountered that might help others. Um, they're going to be doing some events at local ACES. Um, they're going to have a number of uh, webinar Q&A sessions that are going on throughout the month. And if you participate, you can even uh, win either a, a cloud badge for your community profile. I know some people don't really care about that. I personally love having badges. There's also the opportunity to win one of these, which is a cloudy. It's a little plush uh, stuffy that you can have on your desk. Uh, it's a nice little memento to have. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, go check out what's going on on the Atlassian community, and we'll see you next time. Bye.